and good evening, everybody. Uh, here is our next installment, our next pen cast. This is going to be about the four-line geometry. This is out of section 1.4 in the textbook. Now, the four-line geometry has three axioms. Now, the first axiom says that there exists exactly four lines in the geometry. The second says that any two distinct lines have exactly one point that's on both of them. And the third axiom says that each point is on exactly two lines. I messed up when I wrote that the first time uh, and wrote something that is wildly incorrect. So each point is on exactly two lines. So now let's think about some models. What, what could possibly represent a geometry that has these three properties? That my first thought was just to draw four lines right here and put one point on the intersection, then we certainly are satisfying axiom one because there are four lines. And any pair of these lines, any two distinct lines, have exactly one point on both of them. This point in the middle certainly satisfies that. However, this model falls short. It does not satisfy axiom three. because axiom three requires that each point be on exactly two lines, but this point is on four lines. And so this is no good. This is not our model. Now the second one actually satisfies the second two axioms. Uh, certainly any two distinct lines here have exactly one point on both of them. And any each point uh, in this geometry is on exactly two lines. Uh, but we happen to be violating the first axiom, which is that there exists exactly four lines. Because this only has three lines, this is clearly not the model for our geometry. This does not satisfy axiom one. <clears throat> now our next potential model uh, does have the, the, the feature of having exactly four lines. There's one, two, three, four. And certainly uh, each point is on exactly two lines. This point is on this uh, line one and two. This point is on line two and three. This point is on line three and four. And this point is on line one and four. However, uh, this violates axiom two because this says that any two distinct lines, axiom two, sorry, says that any two distinct lines have exactly one point on both of them. And in this case, uh, the line labeled one and the line labeled three have no points in common. So this can't be our model. This does not satisfy axiom two. Okay, and so we finally arrive at this last picture, uh, which I will admit I would have gone through uh, many more drawings before I arrived at this one, but I peeked ahead in the book and uh, I noticed that this one does work. Certainly there are four lines. There's one, two, three, four different lines here. Uh, each two distinct lines have exactly one point on both of them. Uh, lines one and three meet at this point. Lines one and four meet at this point. Lines one and two meet at this point. Line two and three meet at this point. Lines two and four meet at this point. And lines three and four meet at this point. So certainly axiom two is satisfied. And each point is on exactly two lines. Yep, this point is only on line one and four. This point is only on line one and three, and so on and so forth. So <clears throat> here we have a model. This is a good model. Now, the, the, the big idea with the model is that you have a picture of something that satisfies the three axioms. Uh, and, but you need to keep in mind that uh, there can be infinitely many models for uh, this geometry. And so just because something is true in one of the models doesn't mean that it's true in all of them. It could be that we've drawn a picture that satisfies these axioms and by some strange accident happens to satisfy some other properties that aren't necessarily satisfied by all of all the models uh, of the geometry. So this model can suggest things that might be interesting to look at, um, things that we might try to prove from the axioms, but ultimately um, this can only suggest something that might be true about the geometry. It cannot uh, itself provide proof of it, okay? So uh, that said, let's look at this model and see what we can observe. Uh, in this model, we certainly saw that there are six points, um, point one, point two, point three, point four, point five, and point six. Uh, so maybe we could prove from these three axioms that there exist exactly three points in this uh, in this geometry. And uh, another thing that is of interest are the number of points on each line. Remember, the uh, one of the uniformity properties of finite geometries is that each line has exactly the same number of points as every other line. Um, and so this uh, would suggest that that number of points on each line is three. So we have observed that there are six points in the geometry, or at least in our model of the geometry, and each line has three points. So uh, let's see if we can prove that. Moving right along to theorem 1.3. Theorem says the four-line geometry has exactly six points. And uh, if we're going to prove this, we need to prove this from the axioms. So axiom one says that there are four lines. And axiom two, let me open my notebook here so I can see everything. And axiom two says that any two distinct lines have exactly one point on both of them. Now, uh, given that there are four lines, there are six pairs of lines um, because there are, well, there are four choose two pairs. 
Now, this notation, uh, you may recall, simply stands for 4 factorial over 2 factorial times 4 minus 2 factorial, and that turns out to be 6 in this case. <clears throat> so here are our pairs. Uh, first of all, while we're at it, just for convenience, let's say that these four lines are L1, L2, L3, and L4. So our six pairs are L1, L2, L2, L3, L3, L4, uh, let's see, L1, L3, L2, L4, and L1, L4. So each of these six pairs has to have a point on it. Okay? Now, because that point, because that point can only be on two lines, that means that there has to be at least six different points here. Because if the point that lies on L1, L2 also lies on L2, L3, now all of a sudden that point is on L1, L2, and L3. And that's that's impossible. Axiom, uh, axiom 2 says that there's exactly one point. Wait. No. Axiom 3 says that each of these points must be on exactly two lines. Okay. So this shows that there are at least six points in the geometry. And while we're in the business of naming things, let's say we have our six points P1, P2, P4, P3, P4, P5, and P6. Okay? So we know that there are at least this many points in the four-line four geometry. Sorry, I ran out of room there. So now what we, what we want to do is show that there can't be any more than six, and that combined with what we just argued will tell us that there are exactly six. So uh, in, in the usual uh, argument by contradiction, we're going to show that there can be no more by assuming that there are more. So we're going to assume there is a P7 that is not any of the other of the previous six points. Okay. So if P7 is a point in the four-line geometry that is not one of the six points from the six pairs of lines, then by axiom 3, P7 must be on exactly two lines. So we have P7, that's a point, has to be on a line, has to be on another line. Now the problem is, which lines are we talking about? These two lines uh, must have been one of the original four lines in the geometry, um, but if so, then we already have, uh, then, their, then their intersection is already one of these six pairs. So if this is L1, for instance, and this is L2, for instance, then P7 is a point that's, all, that's on this pair, but this pair of lines must also have one of P1 through P6 on it. So now we have two lines that have P7 on it and some other point. But this means that we now have two lines that have at least two points on it, on both of them. This is a contradiction to axiom 2, because axiom 2 says any two distinct lines have exactly one point on them. So we now have established that the four-line geometry has at least six points on it and can't have a seventh point on it. Therefore, it has exactly six points in it. And that ends our proof. I had a professor once who always ended every proof with, and we win. So we have one theorem 1.3, and we're going to move on to theorem 1.4, which uh, is an attempt to prove our other observation that each line in the four-line geometry has exactly three points on it. Okay, so here's how our proof is going to go. We're going to let L be a line in the four-line geometry. So we have line L here, and now uh, we know that this line L uh, intersects with every other line in the geometry, and since there are four lines in the geometry, there has to be three other lines. Okay, so there's there are at least three points on this geometry because it must intersect with at least three other lines. And by a previous argument, though they can't, those three other lines can't intersect in L in the same place, in a common place, because then we would have a point that uh, is on more than two lines, and that's not allowed. Okay, so by axiom two, L is on a point with each of the other three lines. One, two, three. And since each point is only on two lines, these three points must be distinct. So call them P1, P2, and P3. Okay, so we've established that there are at least three points on this line. Maybe there are four. We don't think so, but uh, just for the sake of argument, say we do. So here we have our L. We have uh, point one. We have point two. We have point three. Now suppose there is a fourth point, P4. Okay, we actually don't want this to be true, so we're hoping that there is some sort of contradiction. Now this point four 
P4 must uh, satisfy the axioms of the geometry. And you may recall that uh, one of the axioms says that uh, any point, each point is on exactly two lines. So this P4, it's on L, so it must be on some other line. What line is this? <clears throat> now, L already has an intersection, already is on a common point with each of the other three lines. Uh, so either this line is equal to one of these, in which case we have, uh, in which case we have, we would have two lines that are on more than one point, or this is not equal to either any of those other three lines, and now all of a sudden we have five lines. We'd have one for L1, two, three, four, five. And in either case, we end up with a contradiction. So we, it is obviously impossible that uh, such a P4 would exist. So we've established now that we have at least three points on the line L, on the line L, and we can have no more than three points on the line L. Therefore, the line must have exactly three points on it. Now we didn't make any special assumption about the line L, other than that it was some line in the four-line geometry. So this proof applies to all four of them, and so we win, and we're done.